Right, there's so much going on in the world, isn't there, at the minute? And the, the number of people being made redundant in the UK has risen at the fastest rate since records began. So we have our resident lawyer, Aisha Niar, with us, who's here to help us understand what your rights are when you're facing redundancy. Thank you for coming in to Thank see you. us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, so, I mean, it's really worrying, isn't it, if you're kind of working out whether you're going to be made redundant or not? You are. I mean, what you have to remember is the furlough scheme is now coming to an end. Employees are being asked to make bigger contributions, so it's inevitable, and we've heard all about this in the newspapers and on the news, redundancies are going to be made. There's a lot of workplaces at present that are suffering, and the R word is sadly on a lot of people's minds at the moment. It's really important that you know where you legally stand at yeah. present. And so what should you expect, then, if you're being told that you're potentially going to be made redundant? Well, it depends on your workplace. If your workplace is closing down, then, unfortunately, it's highly likely you are going to be made redundant. However, due to the downturn in work, your employer may just be making a reduction in its workforce. And what that means is you're put at risk of being redundant. You will be put into a selection pool. And what your employer then has to do is choose who to make redundant within that selection pool. Mm. They've got to do it in a fair and objective way. They, most employees will have a selection criteria that they apply cannot discriminate at all, cannot discriminate on grounds of race, religion, sex, but you also can't discriminate on grounds of, for example, if you've got children or you've got a disability. The criteria itself will look at things like experience, qualifications, skills, how suitable you are for the job. It can also look at your disciplinary record, things right. like lateness. So now's the time to assess whether or not you've been a good employee. Yeah, and then there's a, there's a consultation process, isn't there? So what, what does that involve? OK, so the consultation process is a meaningful discussion between the employee and the employer to see whether or not the job itself can be saved. So remember, at this stage, if you're in a selection pool, you're at risk, you are fighting for your job. So my top tip here is prepare for it like it's a job interview. Know what your job is know what you can bring to the table in your workplace, prepare for it, prepare for it. Honestly, it's like a job interview that you're going for. Think about who else is up for the same job, how you can really pit them to the post in that role. And then also think, think about ways your job can be saved. So could you reduce your contractual hours? Could you do an alternative job? Could you do a job share? Take a pay cut. I know that's not ideal, Steph, mm. but if you're faced with losing your job altogether, it's worth doing. And then also your employer might offer you an alternative to the, the job itself and you have a, the option to take that. That saves you again from redundancy. You can trial that for a four week period yeah. and if it's not for you, then just take up redundancy. There's so much to think about, isn't there? There so, is, there is. And what are you actually entitled to if you're made redundant? That will depend on your contract of employment. So now's the time to pull out your contract of employment, see what the redundancy terms within your contract are. If your contract is silent, then you fall on statutory redundancy provisions, effectively the legal minimum that you're entitled to. You've got to have been employed for two years to be entitled to redundancy pay. And then if you are, it depends on your age. Under the age of 21, half a week's pay for every year you've worked. Over 21, a full week. And then over 40, it's probably the best time it's got to be older than, rather than younger, you're entitled to a week and a half for every full mm. year you've paid. That's the good news. And also good news is that it's not based on your furlough pay, it's based on your pre-furlough. Yeah. You can take into account your commission, bonuses, holidays, so all of that's great, but then, here's the bad news, there's a cap if we're looking at the legal minimum. Remember, if it's not in your contract, you're entitled to whatever's in your contract. Statutory minimum, the bad news is £538 a week, um, it's capped, and then total £16,140 as a redundancy payment. Yeah. But you are also entitled to your notice pay and your holiday pay as well as your redundancy. Yeah. So it's worth then going through your contract to see whether you are relevant for the, the, whatever re redundancy package the company has versus the statutory one. Well, remember, your company's redundancy package cannot be any lower than the legal yeah. minimum, so it will always be better than the legal minimum. Lots of companies actually just have the legal minimum within their contracts anyway. Yeah. So that's your legal minimum. And so I guess then your, your top tips would be, you know, how you started this whole chat, which is you've got, you're kind of pitching for your job, aren't you? So... Absolutely, absolutely. What would I give in terms of top tips? OK, first of all, stay positive. It is a very difficult time, but it's your job that's being made redundant, not you. There's lots of help out there. The government have launched a new scheme, a JET scheme, which you can Google, you can find that very clearly on various websites. 
that's helping people who've lost the job during the pandemic back into work. Mm. ACAS offer a brilliant telephone free helpline that you should use. Use all the work, that's, that, that, everything that's available to you, use it. And then maybe now's the time to reassess your career as well. I've heard people in this pandemic decide if they are being made redundant, that they are going to change career. Yeah. Remember, we're in this as a country, we're in this together. It is a very, very difficult time, but we're going to turn a corner and I genuinely believe yeah. that the economy will pick up and there'll be a new door. And it's always really important to remember your skills are transferable. You might not think they are, but your skills you've had in your job will be relevant to so many others. Aisha, thank you so thank much you for so coming much. in. Lovely to see you again.